Hello everyone, my name is Rory Aronson, founder and CEO of FarmBot Inc. And this is FarmBot Genesis version 1.6, our latest and greatest kit. In this video series, we're gonna do a complete unboxing looking at all of the components included in the kit so you can get an idea of what to expect for assembly and learn about how you can hack your FarmBot to make it truly yours. Let's get started. Every Genesis and Genesis XL kit ships in two boxes. We call this long skinny one the extrusion and lead screw kit and the larger one the main carton. This is a Genesis version 1.6 kit, but the Genesis XL comes in similar size boxes that are just a little bit bigger. Both of these boxes come with black poly straps, so one or two people can pretty easily lift the boxes for moving in and out of your building or from uh, wherever you receive the kit to where it's gonna be assembled. Because of their compact size and shape, we can ship these kits for free anywhere in the United States, and we can ship affordably worldwide. So let's cut into these boxes and see what's inside. Grab a pair of scissors and cut off the poly straps. You can recycle these cardboard edge protectors and then use uh, an X-Acto knife or other type of blade to carefully open the box. Make sure that the depth of the blade is not too deep so that you don't damage any of the parts inside. All right, we've got everything out of the box. The gantry columns, lead screw, Z-axis extrusion, main beam, and for the Genesis kit, four track extrusions. All of these extrusions are made out of aluminum and they've been sandblasted to give a nice surface appearance. And then they are clear anodized for a very premium quality aesthetic and feel. These also will look great outside in the elements. They're not gonna rust or corrode. The extrusions in the kit come in three different profile sizes. On the left is the Z-axis extrusion, which is 20 by 20 millimeters in size. In the middle is the track extrusions at 20 by 40 millimeters in size. And on the right is the gantry main beam and columns at 20 by 60 millimeters in size. In total, the extrusions included with the Genesis kit allow you to create a farm bot that is 1.5 meters wide, the width of the gantry main beam, and three meters in length, which is two track pieces end to end. With the Genesis XL kit, you can create a farm bot that is twice as wide and twice as long. So that would be three meters wide, two of the main beams, and six meters long, which is four of these track extrusions end to end. The awesome thing about these aluminum extrusions is that they serve three functions. First, they form the structure of the farm bot. Second, they serve as linear guides allowing for motion along the three axes, X, Y, and Z. That motion is because of the special shape of the profile of the aluminum extrusion and the V wheels included with each of the kits. So these wheels are specially shaped to run along the V slot of the extrusions. Included in the Genesis kits are 30 of these V wheels and they come pre-assembled with two rubber sealed ball bearings as well as a precision shim uh, in between the two. And the third function of the aluminum extrusions is that they serve as a flexible and modular way for mounting other components such as plates or plastic parts. Included in the kit are what we call nut bars and these nut bars slide into the end of any of the slots on the aluminum extrusions and in combination with M5 screws, you can attach a myriad of components, again, such as this bracket here. So let's see how that looks. Here I have a, the appropriate size nut bar. I can slide that into the end, get my component here. Because the slot runs the full length of the extrusions, you can easily loosen components slide them anywhere along the extrusion and retighten them for quick adjustments or if you need to remove something entirely, just slide it out the end. And the last component in the extrusion and lead screw kit is the lead screw. The lead screw comes in this protective plastic case. Pull the end off there. The lead screw is 800 millimeters long 
made of stainless steel and has an eight millimeter outer diameter. It's part of the Z-axis subassembly and it will mount to the Z-axis motor with a shaft coupler. And then it will screw through this Delrin lead screw block. And as the motor spins, it allows the Z-axis to have enough torque through the mechanical advantage of the lead screw to raise and lower the Z-axis. So that's everything in the extrusion and lead screw kit. For additional information, you can check out the documentation for CAD models, more technical specifications, photographs, and more. So let's move on to the main carton of the FarmBot Genesis kit, where we have all of the other components. As before, cut off the poly straps with some scissors. And then open the main carton using a utility knife. Inside of the main carton, you'll find various sub boxes as well as components individually wrapped. We have the electronics box, which comes fully pre-assembled. It's wrapped in paper. The hardware kit, which includes all of the nuts and bolts and little components. The power supply box. Tubes for the water system. Three different cable carriers for the X, Y, and Z axis. A box of motors. A box of cables a box of plates, and a box of plastic parts. And there's also some other sub boxes in here which we'll take a look at in a moment. So I'm gonna put some of these boxes off to the side for now and we'll just go through everything one by one until we've covered every component in the kit. We'll start off with the pre-assembled electronics box. You can just tear the paper off. You can open up the electronics box by pulling these two tabs here and the lid hinges open. There is a rubber gasket around the edge of the lid. Please note that the electronics box is not completely waterproof. You can't submerge this underwater, but it is absolutely rainproof and can be out in the elements through a snowy winter, etc. Inside the electronics box is a few circuit boards. We have the version 1.6 Farmduino in black here. That's the main a microcontroller board that controls the motors, operates the peripherals like the LED lights and the solenoid valve. It's connected with a few USB cables to the Raspberry Pi, which is the green circuit board. The Raspberry Pi is sort of the brain of the farm bot. It connects with our web application. It stores the database of all your plants, uh, and it is what controls the microcontroller and tells it where to move the farm bot motors. On top of the Raspberry Pi is this Pi adapter board which allows the Raspberry Pi to control all of the LED indicator lights and the push buttons up top. We have the red e-stop button, yellow unlock button, three user customizable buttons, so you can program this to click and initiate an action that the FarmBot takes. We have a green sync indicator that indicates when the Raspberry Pi has synchronized its database with the FarmBot web app. We have a blue connectivity indicator to indicate when the Pi has a good internet connection and two other customizable LED indicators. This entire electronics box will be mounted on the gantry column of the FarmBot and all of the cables will come out of the bottom here to connect to the motors, peripherals, and there will also be a power cable coming into the box. All right, so let's set this aside and take a look at the next component. Here is the power supply. Open this box up. There's a little bit of paper fill, all recyclable. This is an IP67 rated waterproof power supply. So this can also be mounted outside and it can be in the rain, in the snow, and it's gonna be totally okay. With the version 1.6 kits, the power supply is rated for 150 watts of output, uh, and that's at 24 volts DC. So the maximum amperage that it can output is 6.25 amps. The input source is compatible with both 110 and uh, 220 voltage. So you can use an adapter to go from the standard US outlet to say a European outlet. In the hardware kit, you'll also find a power cord protector if you're gonna be plugging this power supply into an extension cord and that helps further waterproof that connection. On the output side, we have a power supply cable that plugs into the power supply with this waterproof screw together connector. 
and this cable will be different length based on if this is a Genesis or Genesis XL kit. And then on the other side is a three pin connector that plugs right into the Farmduino. On this power supply are various mounting holes and you can attach this to your supporting infrastructure such as a wooden raised bed using the included wood screws. Next we'll take a look at the cable carriers. There are three different cable carriers included in the kit. One for the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. This wide one here and the shortest length cable carrier in the kit is for the z-axis. When you're doing your assembly, you'll want to take special note of the orientation of the end pieces because the end pieces have the mounting holes on them and one side needs to mount on the z-axis and one side needs to mount on the cross slide in order for this to fit properly. And we're very clear in the instructions which side goes where, but you'll want to take special note of that. The cable carrier is where all of the cables going to the z-axis are organized. That includes the cable for the UTM, the z-axis motor and encoder, the vacuum pump, as well as the camera, and also the z-axis water tube. You can pop out the tabs on the, the cable carrier here in order to insert cables and tubing. And then you can just pop these back in once everything has been inserted. If you need a little bit of extra help popping these out, you can use needle nose pliers or just a bladed screwdriver. The two other cable carriers included in the kit are for the x-axis and y-axis. Very similar design. You'll wanna pay attention to the end piece orientation. There are small tabs here that you can pull out because these ones are a little bit smaller. Uh, you may, again, need to use a tool such as needle nose pliers to help you get those out. This narrow one is for the x-axis. So this will be positioned along the tracks of the farm bot and it's gonna carry the power supply cable and the x-axis water tube. And finally, this medium width cable carrier is used along the Y axis. So it is positioned on the gantry and it holds everything that needs to get to the Z axis as well as the Y axis motor and encoder. Uh, and again, pay attention to the orientation of the end pieces during the assembly process. Included with the farm bot, of course, are uh, the tubing for the water. There's three different length tubes, one for the x-axis, that's the longest tube in the kit, one for the y-axis, which is the medium, and one for the z-axis. And there's a couple of components, barbed components, that allow you to connect this system to a standard garden hose uh, and ultimately to the UTM. These tubes are all silicon tubes, so they're very flexible and they are safe for water for your plants. Here is the motor kit. Inside are four NEMA 17 stepper motors and rotary encoders. Each of these motors get connected to the electronics box through two cables, one for the motor and one for the encoder. Something that differentiates the FarmBot Genesis kit from our lower cost FarmBot Express kits are the rotary encoders. So when the FarmBot tells these motors to move and it sends electrical signals to the motor, the motor is going to rotate and if everything's going well, the farm bot will move. But let's say a plant has grown over the tracks and is preventing the farm bot from moving along the x-axis. The motor is probably going to stall, meaning it's going to try to move but it won't be able to. The rotary encoder is a sensor that keeps track of how much the motor has actually rotated. And if the motor is attempting to move but is unable to, the rotary encoder will detect that and send a signal back to the farm bot and say, hey, something's wrong here, the motor is stalling. And that allows farm bot to then retry the movement if you'd like it to, or send an error message, or just keep track of its position so that the farm bot can continue doing other things without completely getting lost of where it is in the garden. The rotary encoder is constantly tracking all of the motor positions so that you can even move your farm bot by hand and the farm bot will still know where it's at. So the Genesis line affords the most reliable movements uh, of any of our farm bot kits because of these rotary encoders. Next up, let's look at the plate kit. 
All right, so in the plates and brackets kit, we have the cross slide plate, two gantry wheel plates, two gantry corner brackets. There's a left and a right side version, two cable carrier supports of different sizes, a seed trough holder mount plate, two Z-axis hard stops, six belt clips, one Z-axis motor mount, and then track end plates, track joining plates, and tool bays. If you have a Genesis XL kit, you will have more tool bays and track joining plates than shown here, uh, but this is everything in the Genesis kit. All of the plates and brackets have been machined from five millimeter thick aluminum. They've then been deburred, sandblasted, and anodized to give that premium quality look, feel, and aesthetic. The tool bays have been black anodized and then our FarmBot logo has been laser engraved into them and it looks really sharp. All of the holes in the plates and brackets are for either M5 or M3 screws and then uh, a couple exceptions for some of the eccentric spacers. So that's all of the components of the plates and brackets kit. So let's dive into what's next, the plastic parts box. First up are three horizontal motor housings. These provide a rainproof cover for the X1, X2, and Y axis motors. And here is the vertical motor housing, which provides rainproof cover for the Z axis motor. Here is the vacuum pump housing, which provides a rainproof cover for the vacuum pump. This gets mounted on the Z-axis extrusion uh, and the vacuum pump is inside here. Complementing that is the vacuum pump mount. So the vacuum pump gets mounted onto these slots here. These two holes are used to mount the, the plastic part to the Z-axis extrusion and this is how it uh, all finally gets assembled onto the Z-axis. This is the solenoid valve mount. These two screw holes here allow this component to be mounted to one of the gantry columns, and then the solenoid valve gets mounted onto these slots here. On the back side, a small cavity is formed between this component and the electronics box, and that serves as a guide for all of the cables coming from the electronics box going up the back of the gantry column to one of the cable carriers. It provides a spot to help organize them all. So this is both the solenoid valve mount and sort of a cable organizer. Included with the Genesis kit are three different types of seed containers. These are the seed troughs. These two here are the seed trays. And these two are the seed bins. If you're planting a lot of the same seed, we recommend using the seed bins. These just slide right into the tool bays and you can just dump a bunch of seeds in here of the same type if you're planting a lot of the same crop. If you need to tightly control the number of seeds picked up by the farm bot and put into each hole, you can use the seed trays and preload these with an exact number of seeds. Or you can use these seed trays to plant a lot of different crops in your garden. So there's 16 holes in each seed tray, allowing you to plant up to 16 different crops and the seed troughs uh, and the seed trough holder, which gets mounted to the gantry column with this little adapter plate, allow the farm bot to carry seeds with it along the x-axis for quicker planting sequences when far away from these locations. Next up are three types of cable carrier supports. These ones are for the x-axis cable carrier. There are horizontal cable carrier supports that mount on the track extrusions and support the smallest cable carrier here. There's 12 of these included with the Genesis kit and 24 of them included with the Genesis XL kit. Next up are larger horizontal cable carrier supports for the Y-axis cable carrier. These get mounted on the gantry main beam and support the Y-axis cable carrier there. There are six of these included with Genesis and 12 with Genesis XL. And last are these vertical cable carrier supports, four included with each kit. And these get mounted vertically on the Z axis and they support the Z axis cable carrier, prevent it from flopping around and just keep it organized. There's also this little gusset here that is a guide for the Z axis motor and encoder cables. 
This component here is the cable carrier spacer block and it is used to mount the Z-axis cable carrier to the cross slide plate. There's just one of them included with the kit. These here are the camera mount halves. There's two of them included in the kit and they sandwich the camera and allow it to be mounted to the Z-axis extrusion through these two M5 holes here. Also included in the plastic parts uh, box are the pre-assembled FarmBot Genesis tools. And we'll start off with, it's not quite a tool, but it is the universal tool mount or UTM. So in here is the fully pre-assembled FarmBot Genesis UTM. This features three brass barbs on top. One is for the water tube, one is for the vacuum air, and one is an auxiliary port that you can use to modify and add new functionality to your FarmBot with. In the top here is a port that the UTM cable plugs into. The UTM cable is a 12 wire cable that connects the tools and the UTM to the electronics board so that you can do powered operations and verify that the tools are connected and more. So the UTM gets mounted at the bottom of the Z axis with these two mounting holes here. And then on the bottom here is the UTM PCB, which features 12 gold plated pogo pins, which are spring loaded electrical pins or electrical contacts. And that allows a tool to be mounted and make an electrical connection between the tool and the farm bot and the electronics. Also in here are three ring magnets, which allow uh, the farm bot to magnetically attach the tools to the UTM. Next up, let's take a look at the cedar tool. The cedar comes pretty much fully pre-assembled in the box here. This is the tool. It comes with the magnets pre-attached and the tool verification jumper link as well. And on the bottom is the stainless steel lure lock adapter. Inside the box are the lure lock needles in a little bag. So depending on the seeds that you're planting, you'll want to select an appropriately sized needle for that seed size. To attach it to the cedar, you simply give it a quarter twist and that fits right in. And now the cedar is ready to go. So when you're gonna use the cedar with your farm bot, you'll program it to pick up the cedar from the tool bay. It should magnetically attach just like that. And then the farm bot will need to turn on the vacuum pump, which will suck air from this port, which will suck air all the way through the needle and allow the farm bot to pick up a seed, for example, from this seed tray or from the seed trough or seed bin. When you're done using the cedar, you can either leave the needle in because these are stainless steel and so they won't rust, or you can give it a quarter turn and pull it out. Uh, and you can store these in this little holster here as part of the seed trough holder. There's three holes here for different needles for quick access. Next up is the watering nozzle. Pull this out of the box. It comes fully pre-assembled in the box. There is an upper or watering nozzle top piece and then the watering nozzle bottom piece. The top is going to accept the incoming water stream from the universal tool mount that comes in through here. And then the bottom piece is going to diffuse that water stream into a gentle shower for your plants. This bottom piece can be removed by unscrewing these three flanged lock nuts and you can actually 3D print your own custom spray pattern there. Let's say you want to do more of a uh, cone-shaped spray pattern or you want to put on more of a mister nozzle or something to that effect. Next up is our uh, weeding tool. This is the upper portion of the weeder tool, has the magnets and the tool verification link. In the box here are some small M3 screws as well as a variety of these weeder blades. They come in uh, different sizes using the M3 screws, attach these blades in any pattern you want uh, onto the bottom of the weeding tool, for example, like this. And then the farm bot can use this tool to push small infant weeds down back into the ground. When a weed is very small, when it's just popped out of the ground, it has very little energy, has a very fragile root system. And so the farm bot can uh, sort of repeatedly push that weed down, disrupt the root system, it can do that a couple times a day for a couple of days, and that weed isn't gonna uh, have a chance to grow much bigger. So it's a very sort of proactive weeding technique. Get rid of the weeds before they become a big problem. 
If you have softer soil, sandier soil, you may want to use more uh, of the blades. If you have harder soil, you may want to use just a single blade. Uh, next up is the soil sensor tool. Also, this comes pre-assembled in the box. You have an upper portion that attaches to the UTM and the lower portion is the soil sensor PCB. This PCB will measure the electrical conductivity of the soil and if the soil is more conductive, that means there's a higher percentage of moisture in the soil. If it's less conductive, it means the soil is drier. Uh, so this comes pre-wired up to the top of the tool, which uh, again, will electrically connect to those pogo pins on the UTM and ultimately allow this signal to get back to the FarmBots uh, circuit board. And brand new with the Genesis version 1.6 design is the rotary tool. The rotary tool is our powered weeding device, features a 24 volt DC motor in this lower half here that is powered up by the FarmDuino microcontroller and the rotary tool can be used to do light duty weed whacking, drilling, and other operations that require a spinning powered motor. The motor angle can be adjusted by loosening these two M3 screws and then you can adjust the angle of this lower half to change the axis of rotation. Inside the tool here is a PCB that allows for a soft starting of the motor to prevent the power surge that the motor might cause as well as EMI reduction to ensure that this motor and the use of the rotary tool doesn't interfere with a Wi-Fi signal. Included in the box are various accessories, including this pack of zip ties, which can be easily attached onto this little adapter plate and used for the light duty weed whacking. Also included is this shaft extension, as well as a small drill chuck, again, for light duty drilling operations. We have an entire video dedicated just to the rotary tool and how to use it. Uh, so make sure to check that out by clicking the link in the description. So that is all of the parts included in the plastic parts kit. Each of these uh, components is made from a UV resistant ABS that will resist degradation out in the sunlight. Next up, we have the hardware kit. The first thing you'll find in the hardware kit is the getting started guide. On here are different links to our various online resources, including the hardware documentation, the FarmBot web app, as well as a seed selection guide and a few other links. So make sure to check this out. Also included is a sticker pack of mushrooms. So you can add those to your water bottle or laptop, as well as a camera calibration card. You just put, the, put this in the garden bed, have the FarmBot take uh, the calibration image over it and it will figure out all the rest for essentially mapping the plant coordinates to FarmBot coordinates. In the hardware kit are three GT2 timing belts. Two of these are for the x-axis. They run the length of the tracks and one of them is for the y-axis. It runs across the gantry and these allow the FarmBot to move in the x and y directions. If you have a Genesis XL kit, all of these belts will be twice as long. Here we have the power cord protector, which you can use in combination with the input of the power supply. And this is useful for creating a more rain-proof connection between the power supply and an extension cord if you're installing your FarmBot outside and don't have an outlet nearby. Insert the connection in here and close this up. And there's a, a rubber seal on the end here and this creates a little bit more protection against the elements. And make sure, of course, if you're installing your FarmBot outside that you use a GFCI protected outlet. Here is the pack of 30 pre-assembled V-wheels. Again, each of these has two stainless steel rubber sealed ball bearings as well as a stainless steel precision shim inside. They come pre-assembled so you can just connect these with some M5 screws and nuts to the various plates uh, according to the, the FarmBot system design. Included in the hardware kit are a variety of components for the water system of the FarmBot. This right here is the pressure regulator, pressure reducer. It takes your incoming water pressure from your muni municipality and brings it down to 15 PSI, which is a nice working pressure for the farm bot. There is some Teflon tape here for the threaded connections. There are two NPT to barb adapters made out of brass. 
as well as one for garden hose threads to the, the barbed adapter. So this allows you to go from your standard garden hose and connect to one of these silicon tubes. For each of these threaded connections, you'll need to make sure that you insert one of the three quarter inch rubber gaskets. This right here is the five millimeter to eight millimeter shaft coupler. This connects the Z axis motor shaft to the eight millimeter diameter lead screw. There are different sized nut bars included with the kit for mounting different components to the extrusions. These really short uh, nut bars are for the belt clips. There are some longer nut bars for cable carrier supports and many other components. Even longer nut bars for the track end plates and other parts. And the longest nut bars in the kit are for the track joining plates. If you have an XL kit, there will be even longer nut bars for the gantry joining bracket. Here is the lead screw block made of Delrin. It mounts to the cross slide plate and as previously mentioned, allows the Z axis lead screw to raise and lower. Here is the inline air filter and the two vacuum pump tubes. So these just get pressed onto the inline air filter and then this upper portion goes to the vacuum pump and the lower portion to the universal tool mount and the inline air filter prevents debris from getting sucked up all the way through into the vacuum pump, which would, which could cause malfunction. Here are three uh, GT2 pulleys. These attach to the X1, X2, and Y axis motors and interface with the timing belts. There is a small 90 degree barb, which allows you to connect the Z axis and Y axis water tubes together at the cross slide. There are six belt sleeves, which when used in combination with the belt clips and the belts, allow for a very secure connection so that the belt can be tied at the ends of the tracks and the ends of the gantry main beam. And then there's a bag of M5 screws, M3 screws, wood screws, spacers, M5 flange lock nuts, M3 lock nuts, uh, and depending on if you have a Genesis or a Genesis XL kit, this bag will contain different quantities of each of those components. There are a couple different sizes of zip tie included in the hardware kit. Uh, these larger ones are used to attach the solenoid valve and vacuum pump, and these smaller ones uh, are for cable management purposes. There is a bag of the special eccentric spacers, which are gonna connect to the gantry wheel plates and the cross slide plate and allow you to finally adjust the spacing of the V wheels so that FarmBot can move very precisely uh, along the aluminum extrusions. There is a box of all of the assembly tools that you're gonna need to put together your FarmBot. There is a three millimeter and two millimeter hex driver, as well as an eight millimeter and 5.5 millimeter box wrenches. There is this thin wrench specifically for adjusting eccentric spacers and a few Allen keys for uh, some of the smaller components in the kit. In a box of its own is the vacuum pump. New in the version 1.6 design is the vacuum pump features a PCB on the back of the motor here. And this PCB helps prevent electronic magnetic interference that the vacuum pump motor can cause. Any of our older customers who have V1.5 or before kits, uh, this is a great upgrade because it can help reduce uh, connectivity issues. And also in a box of its own is the 24 volt solenoid valve. This is the same as what has been used in, in previous uh, 24 volt system kits. And last is the micro SD card adapter and its case. You will find the micro SD card pre-inserted into the Raspberry Pi in the electronics box. And in case you don't have a micro SD card reader, just a standard size SD card reader, you can use this adapter for flashing FarmBot OS onto that micro SD card. Okay, so that is everything in the hardware kit. We have just one more box to go, the cable kit. Let's see what's in there. In the cable kit are all of the cables needed to power up the stepper motors and other peripherals of the farm bot. We'll just go through these one at a time here. New in the version 1.6 design is a two-piece UTM cable. This connects the Farm Duino electronics board to the universal tool mount. And there's two halves. One goes through the Y-axis cable carrier 
And then there is this screw together 90 degree connector that is fully waterproof. And this portion of the cable goes through the Z axis. So now that this cable has been split into two pieces, it makes for a much easier assembly process uh, because you don't have these continuous long cables running through the whole system. You can sort of break them apart at the Y, Z intersection. The Z axis portion includes two connectors here which attach to the UTM PCB and this rubber shroud which covers up this portion here to allow that connection to be rainproof. This new cable with the V1.6 kits is also shielded and we have a special pin on the UTM dedicated to protected earth shielding uh, and that's specifically for the rotary tool and works in combination with the rotary tool PCB to help, again, protect the, the Wi-Fi signal integrity against any EMI. So this UTM cable is now more flexible, shielded, two components, so it's just a lot better than the, the version 1.5 cables and previous versions of the FarmBot. Here is the solenoid valve cable. It connects the FarmDuino's solenoid output to the solenoid valve. Here are jumper wires included with the kit so that you can rewire the UTM to other portions of the FarmDuino electronics board in case you wanna do custom functionality and create your own tools, or you just wanna rewire your whole farm bot and make it work differently. In this uh, aluminum pouch here is the LED strip. Depending on if you have a Genesis or a Genesis XL system, this strip will be longer because it gets strung through the gantry main beam and allows the, the farm bot to light up the area beneath the gantry. New in the version 1.6 kit design is a three wire vacuum pump cable. The addition of the third wire is for protected earth grounding and these three quick connect connectors will connect these terminals here on the vacuum pump. And so this two part cable has a, a 90 degree waterproof connection here. One portion is for the Y axis and one portion is for the Z axis. Here is the camera and the camera cable. On one side, we have the USB connection for plugging into the Raspberry Pi. In the middle, we have the 90 degree waterproof connection. And on the other side is the camera module, which gets held by the camera mount halves on the end of the Z axis. And finally are the motor and encoder cables. The shortest ones in the kit are for the X1 motor and encoder. They plug in the stepper motor and encoder to the FarmDuino. Next are the X2. These are all labeled with small labels here so you know which cable uh, goes to which axis and where it needs to plug into on the electronics board. Then are the Y axis cables. And finally, the Z-axis motor and encoder cables. These are split into two halves. Here I have the motor cables. There is a uh, Y-axis portion and the 90 degree intermediate connector for the Z-axis portion. And the same with the encoder cable. So here's everything included in the main carton. These parts, combined with what's included in the extrusion and lead screw kit, is everything you need to put together your FarmBot Genesis version 1.6 kit. To find out more information about any one of these parts, visit our documentation hub at genesis.farm.bot. There, you can find our open source 3D CAD models, 2D drawings, technical specification tables, links to buy individual parts, and more. That is our commitment to designing and producing 100% open source products. And if you'd like to purchase a FarmBot Genesis or Genesis XL version 1.6 kit, visit our website at farm.bot. Thank you so much for watching this unboxing video. We'll see you in the next one.